This is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the NautilusDryDocks.com. Thank you for joining me again. Um, we are continuing the build of this 196 scale uh, US Ohio class submarine kit put out by Submarine Works. If uh, you've been following along, you'll see that we've had a buildup uh, of this that was interrupted a little bit in the middle there with some lost data. But what we're going to continue on with this video, uh, what we're going to be focusing on is the art and science of trimming out uh, this particular RC submarine for submerged and surface operations. So a lot of people have some difficulties uh, with this and if done incorrectly, you end up with a submarine that is nothing but a pain to operate. But if you do it properly, uh, it is nothing but a joy. So let's take a look at what we need to do to get ready to begin trimming out this 96 scale Ohio. So as you have uh, seen before, I've got lead in the keel of this boat already. Uh, those were long strips of lead utilized for uh, ballasting down uh, duck decoys for hunting. Uh, they're nice and convenient, uh, long strips easily cut and easily applied to the model. So uh, those are lining the keel of the boat already. Now, the cylinder inside is a three and a half inch OTW dive module, which is going to be providing uh, a certain amount of buoyancy. And just how much uh, is a little bit up for uh, discovery. We need to find out if it's going to be sufficient to float the boat or if we need to add foam. But to get ready for this operation, what we need is our submarine. What we need is a test facility uh, for a boat of this size. A swimming or a, a bathtub is not going to do. So we're going to be utilizing uh, my spa in the backyard. We need some flotation foam. This is closed cell styrofoam. Comes in uh, four by eight sheets. This is one inch thick. Uh, you can get it from your local uh, home improvement store. I've cut out uh, a two inch wide strip and a one inch wide strip just so that it's easy to cut into sections for a little later on. The other thing that you're going to need are some rubber bands that we're going to wrap around the hull so we can tuck our foam um, up alongside of it. It'll make things a little bit easier. And a sharp knife for cutting strips of foam to put in the boat. So with all of that in hand, we shall now journey the incredibly long distance back to the backyard and uh, begin our testing procedure. All right, everyone, uh, just made it to the side of the spa here. Got some elastic bands wrapped around the outside of the model. We're gonna drop it in. Now this has never been in the water. I have no idea what it's gonna do. Uh, my gut tells me it's going to sink, but we're just going to make sure by putting it in the water first and seeing what happens. So without any further delay, let's see. Well, it looks like we are floating uh, high by the bow. Uh, quite a bit. I would think we may be able to get away by adding some ballast in the front and maybe just a little tiny bit of foam in the back. So let me go grab some of that and um, we'll get to work. All right, I've got another uh, duck weight here. Let's tuck it in this elastic band that I've got underneath the hull. I think we're gonna need quite a bit by the looks of it here. So I'm gonna put the whole strip on that elastic band is gonna hold it. in an effort to get that water line. Perfect. So I'm gonna split out two equal size pieces. I'll use a three inch chunk. Two three inch chunks. Just like this. I'm gonna slide this elastic band 
back. Oh, and I broke my band. Oh, and there goes my weight. So you want to put these weight or these pieces of foam below that waterline mark. Wow, that is just about perfect. Let's take a look. So that water line is right perfectly at the painted water line, which is to scale. And if we take a look at the back, it's just darn perfect there too. So with that being the case, um, we're gonna make note of where that foam is actually placed. And what I actually want to do, because I can see that seam, is going to make placing that foam problematic. I just want to see what it'll do if I slide the foam forward ahead of that seam. I can live with that. That is actually really, really good. Let's make sure that's down below the water line. That is it. All right. So, that thing being the case, I know where my weight needs to go. I know where my foam needs to go. Now I am gonna go back into the shop. We are going to adhere that in a permanent manner. And then we're gonna bring everything back out, double check and uh, move on to submerged trim. Okay, we are back in the pool. As you can see, um, it is floating at the perfect surfaced waterline. Uh, just dropped it in there. The foam is uh, adhered with some two-sided tape and then I glued the uh, weight into the bottom of the nose there. Um, let me see if I can just grab it. The other thing that you need to watch is uh, to make sure that your left and right trim uh, is looking good, that the model is floating perfectly vertically and it is looking really, really good. So. With that being the case, we are now going to have some fun submerging the boat. All right, uh, we're gonna turn the model on. Uh, got a remote key fob here, a remote on off, and if you watch the sail of the model, you'll see the lights turn on. There we go. How cool is that? Got our port and starboard navigational lights make uh, visibility of the model a lot better. Show you a couple of the functions. We've got our sail mounted dive planes. We've got our rudder. Uh, we've got our throttle. Boy, that thing is really going to get up and, uh, and move there. So um, with that being the case, I'm going to try and float this a little bit closer. And we are going to uh, activate the ballast tank. Um, it's got a 14 inch th uh, by three and a half inch diameter ballast tank. Um, we're going to start it venting and uh, you can listen for that working and hopefully it'll dive on an even keel, uh, but let's see what happens. Not bad so far. It's about as good as you can get. The real challenge will be once everything is under the water. Okay, so she's heavy by the tail.
So what I'm gonna do is uh, we're gonna grab some foam and put just a little bit um, up under that elastic band until we get this thing floating level. Okay, I think um, what I've got now is the correct amount of foam. You can see it is sitting uh, certainly above the water line and it's gonna go um, you know, under that missile deck in there. Um, and there's lots of room when you place that foam when, uh, now during this testing phase, make sure that you've got room to install it underneath the hull. So in this case, I've got lots of room uh, underneath the missile deck, that shouldn't be a problem. Let's dive it and we'll see how evenly it ends up submerging. So everything is great right now. Just pausing, we're gonna see what it does. All right, we have her dialed in uh, just about perfectly here right now. Um, that rear foam is just, just bobbing in and out of surface tension on the back. The top of the sail is just barely um, protruding. Can try and get a little bit more water in the tank. There we go. Perfect. Look at that periscope. That is basically trimming the boat. Um, like I said, it's a little bit more art than science and a little bit of science with the art, but uh, with some patience, practice, and uh, a lot of luck, you'll get it nailed down. So that'll probably do it for this chapter of the build. Look for her maiden voyage coming up very shortly. Thanks for joining me again. This is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus Drydocs.com. We will catch you next time. Hey guys, here is an interesting aside. So what I like to do is uh, once that boat gets to neutral buoyancy, uh, I take it out of the water without purging the ballast uh, for these sealed ballast type systems, just so that I can see what capacity of the tank is actually utilized to draw the boat down to the correct trim level. And in this particular case, I found something rather interesting. Um, you can see the, uh, this custom three and a half inch OTW dive module uh, and the water level is, is probably only about a third, maybe a little bit more than a third uh, of the way up. Obviously we want just a little bit more for static diving, but at the most um, this is using about 50% of the capacity, which is telling me that this is um, probably oversized. I would say that uh, you know a 10 inch tank versus this 14 inch tank uh, would probably be sufficient. Certainly not a problem uh, for this case. Bob did a great job of baffling this so that water's not going to slosh around uh, during operation. But something worth noted, um, noting, uh, if you're looking to put a three and a half inch cylinder in your boat, you'll probably want a 10-10-10, uh, 10 10, uh, 10 inch uh, motor section, 10 inch ballast tank, 10 inch pump section, and that will be plenty for your boat.